I first of all I have to thank so much Dominic and Angela to make all this happen. Uh, it was a desire to be here. I'm sorry I could only enjoy the last day of the meeting, but I'm very happy to be here. So this presentation is going to be a little different compared to the ones I I'm used to to give because it's not going to be like a, a data presentation, but it's going to be pretty much uh, a, a summary of what I've been doing in the last years uh, in Italy since I got back. Uh, but I wanted to start uh, from where all these had an, an origin in, uh, in, in Tampa, USF. So as Dr. Diagostino was saying, I started working with uh, a grant as a postdoctoral fellow in, uh, in his lab with uh, Dr. Dean, uh, working specifically with the ONR project, which is uh, um, Office of Naval Research, a specific branch of the US Navy that is devoted to research, to innovation. So what do these guys do actually? They uh, take care of uh, attack mission, defense mission, submarine rescues, and uh, similar projects. Uh, and mainly, uh, their main issue was to um, solve a problem related to uh, seizures. So this kind of seizures are different um, compared to the seizure that we see in epilepsy, but the outcome might be very similar. Um, specifically, uh, if you have a look at uh, the facility uh, that is very close by, uh, USF, we used to work with uh, something called the gas palace, which, is, which, which was actually um, a lot of tanks with gas mixes uh, used to mimic US Navy uh, dives, uh, and so to make this happen in the lab using hyperbaric chambers. So um, I don't know how many of you are divers, but there is a um, something called central nervous system oxygen toxicity seizures, which is a syndrome, it's something happening when we breathe oxygen in a pressure higher than 2.4 atmospheres. When this happens, actually this happens when uh, we have hyperbaric oxygen therapy sessions or when we have uh, diving with rebreathers under the water. Now, when this happens, uh, usually it, it can be fatal because, you know, uh, we can actually drown easily. Uh, I can show you very quickly what it looks like in this video, because some of you might wonder what does uh, CNS oxygen toxicity look like. That, now, this is an, um, an exercise diving in a hyperbaric chamber at 2.4 atmospheres. The guy on the left is breathing pure oxygen. The guy on the right, which is the physician who's taking care of him, is breathing air. So it's very different conditions. Now, the guy on the left-hand side will have seizures. I'm, I'm going to show you in this video. Now, he's, he's communicating to the physician. Uh, he's feeling dizzy. So we want to put off his mask. So uh, the physician takes off his mask, and you will see this guy who has already been hit by CNS oxygen toxicity laying down. You will see his legs actually in tonic-clonic seizures in a second, right here. He's having a seizure. Now, this is not uh, a very uh, dangerous conditions, but can you imagine this under the water? This often means uh, the subject is, is dead. And when this happens on top of that, during a military mission, this is even worse. Because, you know, enemy can attack you, can, you know, there are so many possible options. So we had to find in this project if there was any way to prevent this phenomenon to happen. But first of all, we wanted to identify a pattern of respiration, or cardiorespiratory uh, pattern to predict the onset of seizures. Uh, now, before I arrived in, into the lab, uh, Dr. Dean and collaborators had been working on uh, the solitary complex on cardiorespiratory neurons. So specifically, they had found out that some neurons had the very specific responses to hyperbaric oxygen and uh, to um, carbon dioxide. Now, we wanted to translate this work into whole animal research. Uh, specifically, what we did was to implant Sprague Dolly rats, the little guys you can see here, uh, with uh, radio telemetry uh, devices thanks to which we were able to record in real time electroencephalogram, electrocardiogram, and electromyogram, plus physical activity and body temperature. All this during a five atmosphere uh, dive in air, which means we were mimicking uh, a US Navy dive, uh, but in a hyperbaric chamber. So what we found out, just to quickly tell you, was that, so this is a 
a, a track what we recorded during a regular experiment like electroencephalogram uh, tracks, uh, electromyogram tracks, electro, um, electrocardiogram tracks, uh, as you can see here. But what we found was that uh, a few minutes before the onset of seizures, we were able to identify a very specific um, increase in uh, tidal volume, which is the volume a rat was breathing, um, and uh, frequency, the respiratory frequency, which is how many times per minute a rat was breathing. Now, we published the paper, of course, saying that we had found a potential early physiological marker for this kind of problem. But not only we wanted to find a way to predict this to happen, we only wanted to prevent this to happen. And we knew that, uh, what, what, actually we all know that strategies to prevent this kind of problems were antioxidants or anti-epileptic drugs, but these are very harsh. Imagine. Um, to administer this uh, to uh, Navy SEALs. I mean, it's, it's not that easy. Plus, we knew that starvation ketosis could, be, could, could come in handy, actually. But how could you tell uh, military uh, Navy SEALs to stick on a ketogenic diet during a mission? It's already very stressful. It's already very complicated. You tell them, okay, do not eat carbohydrates. I mean, it's really hard. So we actually um, try to look at the problem in, um, um, say, in a synthetic way. We, uh, we actually synthesize in the lab a ketone ester that could mimic the effect of a ketogenic diet without any dietary restrictions. And what we found was amazing, was actually uh, just 30 minutes before the, the dive, we would gavage, we would uh, in, inject into their stomach, into the rat's stomach, um, an, an amount of uh, ketone ester, and they actually had uh, almost 600% increase in resistance against this kind of seizures. Plus, on top of that, the blood pH, uh, well, yes, the blood pH was a little bit more acidic, of course, but the blood glucose did not get, did not get any modifications. Um, then I got back to Italy. This is Salerno, which is a wonderful city. I invite all, all of you, in case you have not been there, to, to visit this place. It's very, very nice. And I've been working with these guys, Dr. Coppola and Dr. Vigiano, who are two of the major exponents of the ketogenic diet in Italy at the moment. And we've been testing the same ketone ester that we had here in, in Tampa, uh, using a different type of seizure model, the pentylan ethrazole. This kind of molecule is able to uh, um, cause seizures, but epileptic-like seizures into rats. And what we found was that we had an increase, a considerable uh, in significant increase in, of resistance against this kind of epilepsy, even using this model. So this was the paper that we published. Uh, and on top of that, we published another paper the next year uh, stating that uh, we, had, we, we actually tried to uh, put these rats into uh, calorie restriction and we found a very similar effect. So if there is calorie restriction plus the ketone ester, there is a, a um, potentiation of the effect against this kind of seizures. Then, uh, now, fr from now on, I will just be um, talking about uh, what uh, we have done, in, what I have done in Italy since I got back. Uh, it's going to be an update, and if you have any suggestion for the things that I will explain later, please feel free to come and you know, uh, give any comments or suggestions. So I had the chance to work with Dr. Diagostino and uh, Dr. Cilari on a chapter for this book, uh, um, we had it, which has been a really, really nice experience. On top of that, when I got back to Italy, I wanted to introduce the ketogenic diet to most of the people there because, it, I mean, even nowadays, but three years ago even more, but nowadays it's still not very well known what the ketogenic diet or ketosis can do for your health. So I've been actually recording videos and putting them into English, French and Italian onto the web. And thanks to this, a lot of people have contacted me saying, you know, I have this problem, my father has this problem, this is cancer or epilepsy syndrome or, you know, a lot of problems, a bunch of problems. And not, not least, uh, one of these was obesity, was uh, overweight. So we've been actually advising people from all over the country uh, to stay on a ketogenic diet in this way or in that way, but we still haven't uh, really standardized this kind of therapy for uh, any of the, uh, of, of the major and most common pathologies. So one of the things I would like to do next like, would be to open a Facebook page, which is a very simple thing, in order to you know, um, get all the people with uh, problems related to uh, metabolic syndrome or epilepsy or cancer, to get together and try to find a common solution. Also, if you have any suggestions, and this was uh, the thing I was asking about uh, a few seconds earlier, 
please come in and tell me. It would be very nice to have suggestions from, from you. Now, then, I've been working with uh, uh, other people since I got back to Italy. Um, Cristina Perillo is a registered dietitian who's been, who's been helping me a lot, keeping people on ketosis uh, for therapeutic purposes, uh, a lot of purposes. So we're talking about overweight, talking about uh, even Alzheimer disease. Some of them want to be on a ketogenic diet for Alzheimer disease. Uh, so both for neuro, um, de neurodegenerative pathologies and for um, metabolic disorders, for epilepsy. Uh, this lady here is uh, um, the owner of this company. You have seen these products uh, outside of your Legumbri products, which actually can substitute um, easily uh, what we Italians eat the most, pasta, pizza, bread, cookies, Nutella, all of this actually is non-glucidic. So they, these products actually helped uh, the compliance of our patients dramatically. Uh, so if you want to see Dr. Pacini, I think she's still there if you want to, you know, talk to her. Plus she's, she's going to she's gonna have, actually she, she had, I guess, this, uh, this poster um, out here. So uh, I'm just going to present a few clinical cases. These cases are not published yet because our main problem was to follow up with the patients. Plus many of them didn't want me to talk about their case. They're very, um, they're very sensitive. So just a few of them were, you know, open to, um, to let me speak about their problems. But just to give you um, a, very, a very, very quick uh, idea of what, we, what we're having, uh, we have these patients which was diagnosed uh, pro prostate cancer with rib metastasis. He's been on a, a three to one ketogenic diet. Uh, well, he needed the first month to adjust. You know, again, Italian people are very, very stubborn about their food. But once he got adjusted, everything was very, very fine. Um, now, what was very important actually in his case is that uh, his PSA, prostate specific antigen, went from 162 to below one after only two months on a ketogenic diet. And it's been below one for two years. Now, he's been on a ketogenic diet for two straight years and he's very happy. He can do whatever he wants. He has no evidence of cancer recurrence as now. Plus, his, his uh, blood glucose and ketones have been stable for the whole, for the whole time. Uh, patient number two, we got here a 66-year-old uh, guy. He had pancreatic cancer. Uh, he's a physician. Now he knew about the potential of ketosis, so he contacted me and wanted to, do, to know more about it. We wanted to know if there was any clinical center able to treat this case, but actually there was not, and there is not. So we are trying to get, I mean, that's the same thing I've been saying for now two or three years since I got back to Italy and I come back to the United States talking about this. We do not have any center which is specialized on cure of cancer on a ketogenic diet as now in Italy. So we would like to have some. And uh, so this, this guy actually had the cancer antigen with a value of 43.6 at start, but then got after six months down to 9.84, which is a great, a great uh, achievement, I guess. Uh, he's been on 2.5 years uh, on a ketogenic diet, and after his last PET scan, there was no evidence of, current, of cancer re re recurrence. Also, his uh, blood glucose and ketones have been stable. This other patient, much younger, uh, he had uh, uh, glial uh, lesions, uh, second grade. He was on a 4 to 1 ketogenic diet. Uh, of course, all of these guys have been um, implementing their diet with uh, these products I was uh, telling you about, which actually helps a lot to be compliant. And after only nine months on a ketogenic diet, uh, it was, he showed, I mean, his, uh, his MRI showed a consistent reduction of the glial lesions, tumor mass, and of the edema. Last patients I'm going to talk to you about today is, is Matteo, the youngest of our patients. He is very motivated. He had a, a stage four colon cancer, adenocarcinoma. And actually, uh, he, you know, like the other patients, he had received other kind of therapies before. But then, he, so he specifically, he had uh, received the selective internal radiation therapy uh, uh, session and the cyber knife intervention on the lung lesions. Then he was on a, he's been on a ketogenic diet, 4 to 1, um, for uh, three months, but, uh, sorry, for one year and three months, and he is now on a ketogenic diet. Uh, his ketosis was the highest we have ever found to be such uh, high and stable at the same time, 4 millimolar. 
um, so um, he had he, he, his MRI showed um, uh, sorry the computerized axial tomography showed a consistent reduction of the lesions of the adenocarcinoma, which is very good. Now I wanted to um, mention briefly mention the first European conference GLUT1 deficiency. Uh, so we didn't have such a conference before, and we only had the Italian version of it. But last uh, October, uh, we had the very first version of the European GLUT1 conference. And uh, um, on top of that, uh, Professor Tagliabue has been organizing uh, two courses, one per year, for registered dietitians on the course, uh, sorry, on the ketogenic diet therapy uh, application. Um, I've been teaching one class on this course, and I, I've got to say there is nothing like that. I mean, it's been really, um, really fantastic. Um, now, what Professor Tagliabue always says is that long-term ketogenic diet in Italy is very challenging because people still are attached to their Mediterranean diet. They say that it's the best diet ever, and it's very hard to fight against their uh, insecurities. And I will show you pre pretty much what uh, Dr. Kalamian has been talking about before. Um, especially when they have multiple kids dealing with. So imagine little brothers, little sisters, uh, you know, even sharing food is, it can become pretty hard. So this is referred to all those patients who still think that ketogenic diet might be a problem. Of course, we all know that being on ketosis can cause gastrointestinal disorders. We all know that. We know that lack of fibers and bulk can occur. We know that fat can lower the esophageal sphincter tone, uh, can increase the constipation, and increase the gastroesophageal reflux problem. But this is, not, this is not why people should stop a ketogenic diet. There are solutions. Every patient has to be evaluated at the baseline, of course. So every story is different. That's what I keep telling patients. Do not consider what happened to your friend, what is going to happen to you, because it's going to be different, no matter what. You have different metabolisms. You have different biochemistries. It's going to be different. So just keep in mind, your diet has to be modeled onto your metabolism. So patients are always evaluated at the baseline. The constipation can be always treated with uh, sugar-free uh, laxatives anytime. And uh, also uh, the uh, gastroesophageal reflux can be treated in this way with uh, sugar-free drugs. We have a lot in Italy. I mean, I just don't understand why people don't think about the connection between this kind of drugs and what we can do in a ketogenic uh, therapy. Of course, we have hyperlipidemia. We, we heard of that before. Uh, we know the literature, which is something that still goes against us at this point, uh, says that uh, there are very negative effects on blood lipids and, and endothelium function, but we know that hyperlipidemia is never a reason to stop a ketogenic diet. We can achieve a normal lipid profile in each patient with the help of an expert registered dietitian, because it doesn't have to be a simple registered dietitian, but it has to be a registered dietitian who believes in the properties of the ketogenic diet, which is something rare at, the point, at this point in Italy. Um, I mean, it's, it's getting better and better, but we still need some help. Um, plus, growth failure. We know that, especially in uh, epileptic children, we have uh, a restriction in protein intake and uh, a decrease in IGF-1, but we know that we can prevent this to happen. We have uh, anthropometric measures, me measurements that can be uh, done, can be taken every time we have a follow-up for this patient. We also have a re-evaluation of energy and protein requirements. We can increase the intake of proteins all the time. There's a lot of uh, supplements. Uh, we have also uh, some problems related to uh, hyperuricemia and, uh, and nephrolytitis, kidney stones. Uh, but, of course, we know that we can prevent this to happen using citrate. Uh, we can monitor the, 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 the kidney stones uh, to happen, and we know that the good hydration can solve the problem. We have deficiencies in mi micronutrients, yes, we know that, but we could supplement. We could actually give to the patient some supplement that cannot um, influence in any way their blood glucose, uh, especially carnitine and, and, and vitamin D. And we refer to vitamin D also for the osteoporosis. There's a lot of uh, you know, female patients, especially in Italy, that are having this problem right now. But we do have um, products, drugs, that are actually uh, given by the government for those women that are at risk of having osteoporosis. Now, if these women are on a ketogenic diet, getting these drugs should be easy. 
especially because these drugs, these uh, um, vitamin D uh, um, supplements, are actually like an oil. They look like an oil, which should make it simple to introduce in a ketogenic diet. So, um, ha having said that, so we can increase also in, uh, in oste osteopenia problems, we can increase the amount of calcium and, and vitamin D. Uh, and uh, this can be done also thanks to, um, of course, a constant checkup by the registered dietitian and a bone, or, um, bone mineral density checkup. We all, I also wanted to briefly mention the keto calculator that we had with, this pa with, with our patients. Uh, somebody can think that this keto calculator can be a problem in between the communication, uh, for the communication in between the patient and the physician, but actually it's not. This is to improve the independence of the patients. How does it work? They actually have mm, both, for, both a mobile application and web services that can help them to be in touch with the physician. The physician can see their progress all the time. Uh, and this has been seen to improve the, the communication uh, between uh, the physician and the patients. We also emailed uh, recently 50 Italian families uh, a, a survey mainly families uh, whose kids have been on a ketogenic diet for more than 12, 12 months. So the main issues that they encounter were that the diet is too restrictive. We, we know that. Sharing meals with the young sisters or brothers can be hard. Eating out can be a problem, of course. The social component is always a problem. And finding ketogenic products that are always cheap, that are also cheap, can be a challenge. Then we asked them, do you think a psychological support can help? And 74% of them answered yes. So we are thinking of introducing a psychological, uh, um, actually a psychological expert, a psychologist into uh, the diet uh, programmation. In, in conclusion, what I just want to say very quickly is that uh, long-term management uh, is an effort that has to be done uh, both um, with the physician and with the patients, with the, with the, with, with the families, basically. Uh, the side effect can be prevented and the patients can be monitored all the time. We are promoting a guided self-management of the diet because it is very easy, uh, that, that, that's a very easy way to uh, keep, in, keep their track. Uh, in case the ketogenic diet doesn't work because it can be too restrictive, we all know, can we can reduce their uh, ratio or switch to a modified Akin diet. Um, also, the psychological support, as, we, as uh, we have just seen, can be very helpful. Just wanted to mention very quickly the uh, Italian GLU-1 Deficiency uh, Association, which is uh, doing an amazing job. Uh, they are working with patients and they are actually paving the road for uh, the treatment of GLU-1 in Italy. Uh, also, these guys, uh, the rareconet.org uh, organization, these guys actually put in touch families um, whom kids have uh, rare disease. So actually both patients and, um, and physicians can be interested into this uh, network. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Dr. Cosimina Cusano. I've been working with her very uh, strictly back to back uh, for a number of cases, for epilepsy, for autism, for glioblastoma, for overweight cases. And uh, Dr. Delipsis, whom we've been approaching uh, a Parkinson study in Rome, in um, La Sapienza University, it's still under review. I mean, it takes time because uh, they all think that there will be constipation problems and they don't really see a, a way to solve it. Um, we have just quickly mentioned the uh, American GLUT1 Deficiency Foundation. I'm very grateful, uh, very grateful to them to, uh, you know, to be in this network too. Uh, and uh, Le Gambari Food, of course. Um, we, we, we've been using the uh, Keto Cuisine uh, flour for a long time. You will find some samples uh, outside of here. Um, for keeping a lot of patients, of Italian patients, uh, on a ketogenic diet. So these, uh, these two um, brands have been helping Italian families for quite a long time to be compliant on the ketogenic diet. This is just very, um, next to the last picture I wanted to show you, this is our dream that uh, ketone, administra uh, ketone supplementation can be the final therapy, especially for uh, GLUT1 children. This was a picture taken in, uh, in the Houston conference in, back in 2013. And then finally I wanted to thank my old group of, uh, of friends and crew uh, that you know, some of you you know, uh, that are all here. And uh, thank you very much for the attention. If you have any questions, uh, I'm here.